What's up, my LS crazed amigos? It's your boy Terry, speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more Big Bang for the Buck product info and LSA installing tips. That's right. We're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, hopefully I get to fire this puppy up tomorrow. But uh, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to plumb the, the supercharger to the to the top of the, the LS, I'm sorry, the, the heat exchanger to the top of the supercharger. I'm trying to plumb it because that's important. And, you know, what you got to do is you got to take your time. When you're doing this, you, you want to make sure you do it right and do it once, not do it again. Because it takes a lot of time, a lot of thought to, to route the, the hoses and not make sure it's not going to touch the fan belt, not to mention... I had to redo the um, the air intake, you know, I had to make a little makeshift air intake until I can get uh, one made up, pers you know, like, uh, what's it called, just a personal one made up for this car. But we're not going to talk about that today. What we're going to talk about today is I got a lot of questions, I mean, a lot of questions because I see the project, and people want to do the same thing in their garage shop, which is which is cool because anyone who takes on this is, is you know, it's all about that, and I like that. I like people getting in the garage and doing this because instead of paying someone else to do it, but if you if you feel it's too much, you pay someone and you do it, and you, you know you can't discount that guy. But um, I was getting a lot of questions about the brick. The top half of the LSA supercharger is called the brick, and there's three sensors that people sometimes get confused about. But I'm going to try to clear it up, and I'm going to show you the way I'm going to route them, how I'm going to what I'm going to tie, you know, what connectors go where, and how do you go about. Um, you know, splicing wires into make into the one of the sensors to make it work. So uh, come with me. I'm going to show you, and let's let's check it out. This is the brick that I'm talking about. This is the ZL1 brick. It is the beautiful, oh, and it has three sensors. Now you can get this one. This is like I said, this is the ZL1, and they make one for the Cadillac, which is pretty, but a lot of people prefer the ZL1 um, brick over the Cadillac one. The only difference is the ZL1 has the entrance and exit for the super tr for the um, fluid in the front. Cadillac has it in the back. When I do my Trailblazer SS, when I put the supercharger on that, I probably will get a Cadillac one because like I said, a lot of people prefer this one, but I think on the Trailblazer, I think the Cadillac one looks a little bit smoother. Plus, the Cadillac one is probably going to be a little bit cheaper because a lot of people like to upgrade, or should I say, change their brick to the ZL1 because it looks a little bit more aggressive. But on these bricks, there are three sensors, all right? And I want to explain what the sensors do and what sensor you're not going to use because there's only, you're only going to use two, all right? So let's check it out. Okay, here are the three sensors on an LSA supercharger brick, all right? You got two MAP sensors and one intake air temperature sensor. This one, you're not going to use. You could do nothing with it. You could just leave it just how it sits. You could take it out. You could plug it up. But... You're not going to use this one. This one is the air, the map sensor that you're going to use. This is your map sensor. It stands for manifold absolute pressure. This is the one you're going to use. All right. So now, if you have an LS engine already installed in your car, you can just pretty much, like I had the LS3 intake. I took the map, I took the intake off, put the LSA on here, and I was able to just plug it right in. I got my connector here, so let's just plug it in done deal. Now this is special. IAT stands for intake air temperature. Now remember that because there's going to be a quiz. <laughs> this is not going to be a quiz. Now this is the connector you're going to need. You're going to get a connector for a ZL1 intake air temperature sensor and it goes on just like this. All right. Now you notice there's two wires. You know, I know what you guys are thinking right now. You're probably thinking, I don't have an intake air temperature sensor. I don't know where that is. <laughs> abort, abort, scrub the mission. <laughs> I'll never have an LSA on my LS engine. Calm down. I got you covered. Your boy got you covered. All right? If you have a five-pin mass air sensor like this, all right, now, remember, I'm using an LY6, so I'm using all of the, I'm using an alternator, I'm using a mass air sensor, which is a canister-style canister style mass air. So if you have a five pin like this, this is like a dual purpose sensor, all right? This, three pins go to the mass air, two pins go to the intake air temperature sensor. Ah, so what you're going to have to do, 
is you're going to have to find the, the, the two pins that go that are the air temperature, the air intake temperature sensor. And all you do is you tie it in to the back of that connector that goes to the IAT on the brake. So that's it. Check it out. So on my application, you see the five wires. The first three are for the mass air. And these two right here, that purple and beige or tan, that's for the intake air temperature. So now what I did was I traced it all the way back, got the wire loom out, as you can even see, you know, tied it back away. And what I did was, this is the beige, tied it to the yellow, and this is the purple, tied it to the black. So now I got to, I separated the two sensors that were in this one mass air connector. So now I got the mass air, and now I got the intake air temperature sensor. And I just got to reloom them, reloom them, <laughs> reloom them, loom it, loom it. That's it. All wired up and loomed. Got your map sensor, IAT sensor, all set up, and sensor that you're not going to be using unless you have a Z01 engine or LS9. Then you get the harness from PSI, then you can use it. That is how I'm going to hook this LSA supercharger and run the cables and uh, the wires, should I say, and um, fire this thing up hopefully tomorrow. All right. Now, if you have any more questions, you know how to reach me. I'm not a hard person to find. I want to say thank you for all the questions, concerns, and caring of, and the compliments, can't forget the compliments, on uh, this project because it's really cool. And I'm glad that you guys are really digging it. And um, like I said, if you have any more questions, you know how to reach me. But I'm looking at the clock on the wall, or should I say ceiling. It's time for me to head back off so I can try to figure out the best way to <laughs> mount this, this pump for the supercharger. All right? So as always, please, please be easy, and I will catch you guys real soon. Take care.